Today we're going to be talking about the new RAD doc for WinForms from Telerik. Uh, this control has been under uh, development for a little bit uh, since the beginning of the year to really try and enhance the existing functionality that we had from uh, the previous docking manager. Um, before I get too far into this, let me go ahead and give an introduction of myself. My name is John Keller and I am a developer evangelist for Telerik. Uh, I cover the WinForms and WPF sides of the uh, products. And my blogs are shown below. The top one is my personal blog. The bottom one is my Telerik blog. So feel free to uh, visit those anytime to uh, get some information about what I'm doing and what I'm working on. Uh, before we go any farther, I'd like to mention that Telerik does offer controls beyond just the WinForm side of the house. Uh, we cover both web and desktop platforms, uh, WinForms and WPF for the desktop, and then uh, ASP.NET AJAX. Silverlight and Sitefinity uh, CMS is our content management system uh, for the web as well. Uh, good thing to point out is the fact that the Silverlight and WPF controls share an API, so a lot of the functionality that you may need uh, to use in both locations will be the same. So if you're working with the grid view, you'll have the same functionality and the same kind of uh, code for both sides of the house and that makes it a lot easier on you if you have a dual purposing application. Uh, open access ORM is an object relational mapper so if you're working with any kind of databases and you want to pull your uh, database information and use that inside your code base you can do that very easily with open access and you can do it in the reverse ma manner as well. One of the nice features of open access. Uh, and then reporting uh, covers both the web and the desktop platforms as well. So if you have any kind of reporting needs, Telerik has a nice offering there as, as well. So like I said before, the uh, docking manager is the uh, original control that we had for WinForms for docking. And as you can see here, uh, there, was, there were a large number of interfaces when it came to using the docking manager control. Uh, this this provided a very complex architecture. Uh, it was intended to give a lot of uh, free freedom when it comes to accessing things and and maneuvering how you want to work with the control that sort of thing. So you'll, a lot of versatility. But when you get a little too much like that, it becomes kind of bulky and and tough to use. So that was uh, re-engineered, and now we've got the Rad Dock architecture, which as you can tell is uh, much more simple. Uh, it's comp completely transparent and it's based off a single interface so it's called IDOC pane and uh, it gives you direct access to all the uh, logical objects so real quick let me go over that again the docking manager uh, is what you currently have available today has a large number of interfaces uh, you're doing a lot of casting when it comes to that so if you're doing any kind of customization there you're always casting objects uh, in, as a certain type and, and that really gives a lot of overhead from a performance perspective uh, and so forth. So it's not necessarily the best way to go. Plus, when you have a bulky uh, API like that, it's, it gets really difficult to learn and, and use. So the RAD dock is much more concise. Again, it's based on that single interface, IDOC pane. You have direct access to all the logical objects. And that simplified API is going to make it a lot easier for you to work with and learn. So real quick, I wanted to give you a visual and look at the tree that we have here. Uh, Rad Doc is the core control that you're going to be working with. That's the manager component of this. Uh, we also have the Rad Split Container, which is what is used for the uh, sizing of the different panes and things like that within the docking control. Um, then you have the tab containers for if you're using like a tabbed MDI look or you're tabbing the tool windows and things like that. The tab container uh, takes its place. And then you have the content panes that are, are going to be in there as well. So dock pane and, and, and so forth. So it's, it's a lot more clear and concise than the old mannerisms that you had with the uh, iDockable and, and that sort of stuff. Those things are gone and we've got a nice clean... Uh, visual and logical tree there. So here's a real quick look at a uh, demonstration app I'm going to be going over a little bit later. But you'll see here this is going to have the tool windows inside of a tool tab strip. There we go. There's our tabs. And then we've got uh, document windows inside of a document tab strip. And then you've got a floating window out here 
and uh, so forth. But you, but you get a kind of a feel for the fact of it's going gonna, it's gonna to tie directly to what we were talking about before. None of the, uh, again, dock panes and the, or the eye dockable and that sort of stuff that you had problems with in the past, all those will be uh, gone. Now, I mentioned the RAD split container. That's actually a new control. It's very similar to the split container that Microsoft has. It's, it allows you the ability to uh, add more panels, and uh, it's going to be completely themable. Uh, but it's leveraged by RAD Dock to incorporate the functionality that it needs for uh, sizing of different uh, windows inside of the RAD Dock control. So, very nice the fact that this was uh, implemented, and now you've got an additional control that you can work with inside of your applications for theming or, or whatever it may be. The design time experience for the uh, new Red Dock is going to be much improved. It's no longer using the XML based uh, content for the docking, uh, like Docking Manager. So it's based on that conventional serialized WinForms code, which is going to increase your loading time or reduce your loading time, improve it. It's going to give you better performance in the designer. And then it's actually, if you look at that code uh, that's generated in the, in the generated code for the form, you'll see that true component and control structure uh, right there in the, in the code. You can manage that as well if you, if you had a desire to do that. Currently, the uh, beta version that we're going to be putting out here in the next couple of weeks is not going to have the advanced designer yet. But, of course, there will be one before release. But I just wanted to point that out. If you're going to be working on the beta that's going to be coming out soon, you probably won't have that advanced layout designer yet. But you'll still have the smart tag and be able to add your component or your uh, windows to the RAD dock. In the docking manager, currently you uh, work with the XML when you're doing saving and loading. And, and you can still do that with RAD dock, but it's been much improved. So instead of using GUID based uh, IDs in order to manage the content and things like that. It's actually using it based off name. So it's going to look much similar to XAML because the XML is going to correspond to the specific objects that it's working with. And I'll show you an example of that here in a little bit. Uh, what, one of the things I really like is the fact that now you're going to be able to not only work with files, so you'll be able to save to a file, load from a file. You'll also be able to save and load from a stream or a text reader writer. So that's a really useful thing if you're wanting to store these in the database. You don't actually have to land a file on the system. Red Doc is going to have that capability as well. The fact that we're doing the name for content uh, and for objects inside of there, you're going to be working with that. Uh, it's going to reduce the amount of XML that you've got generated. Also, it's going to be a little easier to read. So you'll be able to, if you're working with the XML and you're wanting to work on that yourself outside of the designer and you're wanting to build that through XML itself, it'll be much easier for you to uh, set that up and get that in place uh, because you'll be able to reference it by name and, and things like that. So also, one of the really nice features is the fact that you have the old XML files you're still going to be able to load those up. So if you need to convert your old XML, if you're storing those in files today, you'll be able to read those in and uh, turn them into the new XML, which is a really great feature for a, an upgrade path if you have any kind of uh, layouts that you're currently saving. Uh, the old docking manager was using a, a previous version of the Telerik presentation framework. Uh, this is going to have the latest version, so it's going to have improved drawing performance, theme management, and uh, just be overall better positioning of the items inside of the docking manager. Also, theming is going to be improved because in the past, auto hide tabs were not previously uh, themable. Now you'll be able to theme everything and uh, do that with uh, the TPF based up because of the latest version of the TPF. And then uh, the fact that you'll be able to set up your theming off of a single item instead of uh, the way it was in the past with uh, the more complex setup for theming. It's like doc presenter control or document presenter control or docking guides, things like that, all those being uh, themed separately. Now you'll be able to theme that core object and, and it'll just uh, go across to everything instead of having to do individual pieces. So uh, managing state is another great feature. You're going to have full support for tracking floating size, the auto hide size, and so forth. So if I've got a floating window and I close it, I will be able to say show that again, and it'll, it'll load it right back up exactly where it was at the same size and so forth. Um, 
dispose behavior. That's uh, one of the, in the past. That's been kind of an issue with the docking manager of when things are being disposed. Now the default behavior when you're closing a dock window is going to be to dispose of that object, uh, and then tool windows will be to hide them. But you have full control over whether that happens uh, via dispose at the close time or not by using the close action property. So you'll be able to say, I only want to hide this, or I want to actually dispose it when the user uh, clicks on the close button. So that's much better from a control perspective. Um, definitely if you're wanting to keep something in memory because you know that the user is going to need it again, uh, or whatever reason you might need to keep that from being disposed, now you have control over that using the close action property. Docking custom controls was a very requested feature. Uh, and uh, now you'll have the ability to do that. You can dock uh, controls, custom controls, and forms with uh, minimal code and no special wrappers. Uh, as a matter of fact, the example I'm going to show you is a model view, uh, view model architecture. So all of these things are going to be controls that are going to be added to the uh, form. These views will be controls that are going to get added to the Drad dock. Uh, and, and you can see the code is, is quite simple. So. Not, not complex at all. It's going to be much better. Drag and drop has been significantly improved. You're going to have a service-based semantics, uh, which is going to allow for you to entirely customize drag and drop behavior based off of what you'd like it to be. Now, obviously, you'll have the standard there, but you'll be able to change that uh, if you have some sort of special needs. You'll be able to uh, control the drag and drop to your own desires. Uh, the guides that were there in the past are now true layered window guides. So they're going to allow for pixel transparency and hot state support. And, and that's essentially when you come over and say, I'm going to dock it in this area. That area is getting highlighted uh, inside of the little docking guide. Uh, you're going to have a semi transparent new location hint. And, and a lot of these things will be more apparent when I show you. But essentially, when you say you want to dock something to the left, it's going to show a transparent area saying it's going to be docked uh, right there, and you'll, you'll know where it's going to land. Uh, and then floating forms Z order support. So when, you, when you're using the guides, they're on top of everything. Your new location hint is below that. And then the floating forms are in the last Z order. So your floating forms are not going to be on top of the guides and get in your way and cause you any kind of issues. Everything's going to be in the correct order. Uh, for you to have nice visuals inside of your application. And then drag and drop is going to have improved performance as well and uh, down to the pixel uh, hit testing very accurate and uh, useful there so performance wise it's going to be better as well. And here's just an example of some of those docking guides. Uh, so here's the docking guides right here on this in these corners and then also with this. So we have this floating window and you'll see that uh, our docking guides are on top of the floating window as is our new location hint saying that this is going to be docked underneath Team Explorer. So everything in showing that Z order you're going to have that nice uh, look and feel. It's going to all be in place where it's supposed to be. So enough talking. How about I show you some of the uh, features that I just talked about. Let me go ahead and escape out of this, and we're going to switch over to the bug tracking demo. And here we go. Uh, the first thing I wanted to point out was the close actions, because I mentioned that you can determine whether something's going to actually dispose or just hide. And so I wanted to show you that first off the right out of the door here, and we're going to say it's just the tool window dot close action is the property. And it's just got an enumerator that you can either say close, which would dispose of your object for you, or hide. So hide will uh, just hide it. It will not dispose of it. It'll be there in, in memory and, and so forth. So just something to be aware of. Uh, it's not difficult at all to work with this. But remember that uh, close action is by default set to close. So you need to set that to hide if you don't want it to be disposed. OK? So. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. And there we go. It's going to come up. I'm going to extend this out to full screen. So here we've got a bug tracker demo, and this is what we're going to be using uh, to work with uh, the Rad Dock today. And you can see that we have this classic auto hide capabilities. Um, come over here and, and pin that back to the uh, Rad Dock. 
we have our splitter rad split container that allows us to do our splitting when we're adding things in here we have our nice tab look uh, so we can work with our different documents in the tabs and then we also can tab out uh, windows it's like tool windows if I wanted to come over here I've got my docking guides uh, so this is going to dock it and you saw the uh, fact that I had the new location hint if I say I want to dock it to the very top here I've got that new location hint it tells me that it's going to be there uh, and the same thing for the sides or if I'm going to tab it and, and so forth so uh, definitely something to be aware of again we've got that floating window and you'll see the Z order uh, demonstrated right here because the floating window is behind the guide and the new location uh, hint so something to be very useful and uh, nice to use inside of your applications there um, you can definitely do the close and uh, show again here but let me demonstrate the fact that I've just moved Team Explorer I'm gonna close it again and I'm gonna show it and here we have the fact that it remembered where I, the location and the size of the Team Explorer let me demonstrate the size here I'll shrink it down and close it and show it again and there you are it remembered that I had shrunk it down so definite tracking of all the different uh, windows that you're working with inside of the rad doc uh, and you can work with those you still have the uh, the uh, setting for changing the window type if you want to set it to floating that way instead of just dragging it off you do that please remember I am working with a demo version so we got a paint issue right there not sure what that was but just be aware of that but overall you see that all the docking features that you're going to need are, are still there and they're they're nice and clean and cleanly implemented uh, definitely the docking guides are very useful and the docking hints specifically showing those new locations and so forth so let me go ahead and dock this back over to the side uh, the next thing I wanted to point out is the fact that you have access to the logical objects themselves. Now, in the past, if you were trying to work with the document panes, you would actually run into some issues if you were using something like an MDI tab uh, or an MDI application, things like that, because uh, just the way that those items were encapsulated inside of the docking manager. Well, now I've got my title here, and I'm going to change my title to this. Here's my title. I was on the wrong tab. So here I've got this. I'm changing this title and you see it's changing not only right here but I've got it bound to my grid up top. So you truly can work with these. Working with title and uh, us, and apply the, that setting directly to the uh, component that you're working with. Okay. So the next thing is when you're working with the TPF you have the ability to change uh, colors across the board so now I'm going to change this all to blue and you saw that my settings went to blue sapphire and back again Let me switch that a couple more times to make it clear there we go and just to show that these are all themable I'm going to switch to some that have some settings that aren't there so silver doesn't have the uh, icon for auto hide yet I don't think black does either but you'll see that you have theme control over those because when with the blue and the and the sapphire those are there so definite control over the look and feel of the application and of course you'll have some really nice themes to make all of your rad doc uh, components work the same as uh, the rad grid view and the rad calendar rad scheduler those sort of things so that you'll have that nice consistent look across your applications when you're working with rad doc and or the, just the split rad split container as well because that's going to be themable since it's used by uh, rad dog so uh, let me switch back over very quickly and I want to show you the second piece here yes so here what I've got is an application that is WinForms using the old docking manager let me open that up and I just have a couple of dock panels on the on the left and bottom one on the right and then a document window in the uh, center what I need to do now is I'm gonna run this and I wanna save that layout to an XML file and uh, I'm just gonna say save it and if I change these around and close some I can reload that layout to be exactly what it was now let me do the exact same thing with the rad doc 
I'm going to run that. And you're going to be able to uh, work with this. You're going to be able to save your layout and, and uh, move things around and, and close them and so forth. But let me let me do something else before I get to that. And I want to switch over to my Internet Explorer. And I want to switch here and show you. This is the Docking Manager uh, XML that was generated when I saved a moment ago. And you can see here we have a docking tree, and, and you've got sites, sites orientation, dockables. And this is not very clear what we're working with. We don't even get to dock panel until we get down to the XML dockable. So as you can tell, it's, it's not an easy thing to read when you're working with this. Let me switch over to what the rad doc generates, and you'll see very clearly we have our rad doc, have our main document tab strip, and all the properties associated with that. And then you get into uh, Telerik.wing controls, UI.rad split container orientation. So it's it's very apparent immediately what you're working with inside that XML. So it's much again, it's much more XAML like that uh, WPF and, and Silverlight use by saying, okay, I'm referencing a specific object and the properties with that. So much more useful, much easier to read and understand. And again, if you're working with this file directly, it's going to make a lot more sense um, for you to type this than to switch over to the old view, which is going to be a lot more confusing and to work with. So that that's to demonstrate that. Now I want to show you, I can load the old layout which is actually the docking manager. I probably should have called that load docking manager layout, but it's called low, load old layout. And here you go. Now you see I have my two uh, panels here on the left, my panel on the right, and my docking uh, panel here in the center. So that shows that we can read that old uh, docking manager file and, uh, and apply it here. And then I can uh, also say I want to load my original layout that I saved and now I've switched back to uh, what I originally set up here. So I can switch between those two and uh, it's it's really useful so I can come over here and I can say save my layout and my old layout will now be in the new format and I can work with it from, from this point forward. So let me go ahead and close this just to show you that I was actually reading in that file. I'm going to come over here to rad doc. I'm going to say show the code and I want to show you that when I save, I save to RadDoc XML. When I load, I was saving from RadDoc XML. And then when I was uh, loading from old, I was saving or loading from the Doc Manager XML. So just to show that you can definitely bring those over, that's a great path for upgrade to uh, work with with the RadDoc. Uh, the next piece I wanted to show you is if you if you currently got an application that's leveraging the Docking Manager. How are you going to move that to RadDoc? Do you have to rebuild the form completely? Uh, you know, what are your options? So here I have another form that's using Rad, uh, the Docking Manager, and uh, I'm just going to come over and I've got my panes here, and I could throw some controls inside of here or whatever, but uh, I'm just going to go with this basic look, and uh, I'm going to click on the Doc Manager and say click on the context menu, and here I will convert to RadDoc. This is going to give me a couple of different options. So as you can see here, I can delete the selected document manager and its associated components. Now this is not necessarily the best path to go with because if you have an issue, you don't want to say, okay, well I want to wipe out all that code when I'm doing this conversion. So it's not recommended that you do the delete. Of course, you're welcome to do that if you have source control. It shouldn't be a major issue because you can roll back that code. But uh, just be aware, that's not a recommended practice because you are going to be removing that docking manager and uh, all the uh, components that are inside of that. So if you have any issues, that would be a bad thing. Uh, the better way is to say hide the selected docking manager, uh, which is going to allow you to have the rad dock in the place and seeing exactly what the rad dock is going to be delivering you. And then you can migrate your code to utilize the rad dock for any kind of uh, visual settings that you may be doing like load XML or whatever it may be but the hide selected uh, or hide the docking manager is probably a better route to take and then the last is you can leave that docking manager in place and you're just going to convert which means you're going to have to do a lot of replacement work anyway to get the rad dock in over the top of where the docking manager currently is but I'm going to go ahead and leave it as hide the selecting docking manager 
and I want to switch over very quickly whoops cancel that I'm gonna switch over to my docking outline to show you that currently I've got my docking manager uh, primary site and then my dock panes and I'm just gonna click on this docking manager come back over and say convert to rad dock I want to say hide the selecting and proceed and now I've got my dock panel or my rad dock in place my docking manager is no longer there and I can see my rad dock and I can see the tree that I showed you earlier so we've got our dock manager here the rad dock control the split container and then the tab strip and then the tool window inside of that and we see that for the document tab strip and the document window and so forth now I do have currently have this uh, extra tab strip that gets here I can just come over here and delete that and uh, I've got everything in place. If I had controls on the dock panels, those would also be in place within the rad dock. I just didn't want to do that from a visual standpoint. I figured it'd be easier to just kind of see all those control or the uh, the uh, panes layout for you. So you definitely have the ability to convert uh, an existing dock docking manager to rad dock, which is great from an up upgrade path whenever you uh, proceed forward with this. Now, uh, let me show you that you can you get the same look and feel that you need for uh, the rad dock, and you can come over here and let me go to that smart tag again. If I click on the, well, I'm not selecting correctly. I'm bad with a mouse. There we go. So here, uh, remember I said that currently you're not going to have the advanced layout designer, but that will be in place by the time that the release happens. But just show you, you can still. Uh, use the current um, smart tag to add different items inside of here and you have that control to work with these and, and do the splitting inside of the uh, control and so forth <clears throat> you can delete these if you don't want them in place you can and you can drop them and so, and so on so there we are I'm deleting and, and just so you know I'm actually deleting the pieces inside of these so uh, here we've got our tab strip and I deleted the uh, content section that was inside of those. So you have control over all the different aspects of those. Probably should have said that when I was doing it. Okay. Delete. So again, remember you see the split containers and now you've got a split container inside another split container and, and so on and so forth. So definitely a lot of control over the docking options there. So let me go back to the bug tracker demo. Oops, wrong one. Very quickly. Oh, I think I've already got it running. There it goes. Okay, so again, I just wanted to show the uh, usage of all these different features again for the rad dock. The fact that you have the nice uh, split and you see how smoothly that, that goes and gets painted. Uh, you do have the ability to do the size. Uh, memory so I can come over here and close these and say show it again it's going to be the same size location whatever it may be uh, of course I can close my tabs and here I've got some paint issues again uh, if you double click here I'm, I'm double clicking these and pulling uh, creating a new item uh, every time I double click on an, on an entry inside of my grid view and you see that this is adding those uh, as con these are custom controls the model view view model these little views down here are custom controls that are just getting added uh, to the dock window down at the bottom so you see that's very quick and easy to work with and again I have full control over uh, what what kind of values are going to go in here so if you have custom controls that you're going to be need docking inside the dock window this shows that you can definitely do it um, it's not difficult to work with at all and I think I can switch to that code very quickly if I get to the rad grid view double click create bug details view and here we go I'm simply coming in here and working with this uh, whoops that's not what I was looking for wrong code there we go it's at the bottom uh, so here we go we've got our bug details uh, being created there's our view that's our control we're setting the uh, bu the bug which is just the object that we're working with and then we're putting it inside the docking window by control dot add bug details and then we're docking it to fill that up and then we uh, do some binding here for the text to title
and so on and then we add that to the uh, document so we just say add document and then the document window that I just created with my uh, bug details object inside of it so you have full control to add whatever controls you need to to the uh, rad doc okay I think that pretty much covers uh, most of the functionality that I was wanting to discuss today. That should give you a general overview of what the new Rad Doc is going to offer. Uh, very quickly, let me switch back over here. Uh, okay, so our planned release is going to be Q2 2009. Uh, I don't have a date for that at this time, but I do I do understand that there's going to be a beta of the Rad Doc in the next couple of weeks. So you should have the ability to get in there and work with it and get a feel for how you're going to migrate to the next version and what benefits it offers to you. Uh, feel free to please give a lot of feedback. I know the team's looking forward to getting a lot of feedback. They've uh, put a lot of effort into getting this to be uh, the best that they can get out or deliver because they want people to really uh, benefit from the, from the re-architecture that's been going on. So... Just to cover the things again, we have an improved object model, uh, much easier to learn API, uh, not a, a, a ton of interfaces. We're down to one interface, the IDOC pane. And uh, we have the increased control over the dispose uh, method. So if you're working with something and you want to say hide it instead of dispose, you're not going to have to worry about that. It's going to be something you can control with the close action property. Also, the fact that you can add custom controls to RadDoc with very minimal code and, it, and it's going to work effectively and exactly the way you specifically desire it to work, that's going to be in place for you as well inside of RadDoc. The upgrade support from Docking Manager, uh, not only from the conversion that you can do and uh, your options there for either uh, upgrading it or removing it and so forth, but also the XML features in order to say, well, I've got this XML saved out here that I've been working with. I store all my user preferences, whatever it may be. You'll be able to do that as well with the XML support. And, of course, you'll be able to uh, now work with the text writer and text reader and streams for uh, improvement with uh, databases if you're storing things out into the database. And then last is the uh, fact that it's using the new TPF uh, Telerik presentation framework. So it's going to have a lot better uh, visuals. Uh, definitely you saw there from the, uh, the, the docking hints and things like that. Those are all uh, going to be a lot nicer for you to work with. And uh, you can do some customization on the, the rad dock that you haven't been able to do in the past.